What's up guys, Nathan here. Path of Exile is a weird game, because unlike other RPGs, high rarity items are not usually better than low rarity ones. Generally speaking, rares have the highest potential to be best in slot, whereas most uniques tend to act as cheap placeholders. This means that when you pick up a unique, chances are it'll be worthless to most players, and you'd be better off vendoring it. However, there are two big exceptions to this rule. One, when a unique can provide some sort of build-defining benefit, or two, the unique in question is significantly cheaper than the rare alternative. A build-defining example would be something like the Poet's Pen or Cosprey's Malice, as there simply is no rare alternative that can accomplish the same thing these items do for their respective builds. A cheaper alternative example would be something like Belly of the Beast, which in the case of Belly, a well-rolled elder chest will generally give you more life than a belly can, but will be much more expensive and difficult to get compared to just slapping on that Belly of the Beast and moving forward with your build. Today's video is going to be about some uniques that fit into either or both of these categories yet remain still both underpriced or underutilized relative to the power they provide. When I say underpriced, I mean they basically cost less than a rare that represents the same amount of stats that they provide, and when I say underutilized, I mean that they have something like less than 1% usage on Ninja. That last qualifier isn't going to be a hard rule, but you know, underutilized is a pretty subjective thing to claim. So, without further ado, let's jump into the video and talk about some cool uniques. The first unique I have for you today is the Brine Crown. Now, this is a unique that used to be pretty crappy, but I think it got buffed up in Synthesis League to the point where it's worth considering. Purely from a stats perspective, what it provides is about the same amount of stats in terms of life, armor, and resistances that a 10 Chaos Rare would provide. However, it also provides a lot of unique defensive traits. We have things like reduced cold damage taken, huge amounts of armor while stationary, and a chance to create chilled ground when you're hit. These are very situationally strong, but also have a lot of synergy with with builds that like to hold still and let things beat the crap out of them. Something like a Jug that likes to take Soul of Tukohama and just hold still and stack up a lot of physical mitigation and regen. Or something like Flicker Strike, which for some reason counts you as always being stationary so you can reap the benefits of the Brine Crown very easily. It also has the Cannot Be Frozen tag, which means you don't need an anti-freeze flask, but in some cases chills might still get you killed, so you're going to have to make that decision yourself. Overall, this is a very defensive helmet, I think it's very overlooked for the cost as well as the representation that it has on poe.ninja. The big downside of this helmet is going to be the helm enchant and giving up the nearby enemies mods. Both of those are really big for a lot of builds. Helm enchants aren't always going to be necessary, but there are some builds, for example, something like Stormcall or Earthquake where you really need that enchant. And the nearby enemies mod, if you don't know about that, is going to be a mod that you can roll with Delve Fossils on rare helmets that's generally going to make you do a lot more damage. Both of these kind of suck to give up, especially the nearby enemies mod, but if you want a a really cool defensive helmet, then I think the Brine Crown is worth considering. Next up, we have an oldie but a goodie, the old Lion Eyes Vision Chest. So Lion Eyes Vision basically gives you a free 6.5 link that gives you an additional level 15 pierce. The reason why I say 6.5 link instead of 7 link is because pierce on its own is already a little bit low on the damage multiplier side. A level 20 pierce only gives you like 19% more projectile damage, which is not that big. So level 15, really it's not even a full extra link, but it's still something. It's still a little chunk of damage. And then you also got to get a bunch of armor, life, and mana leech. Um, the intended drawback of this unique is that it has a massive dexterity requirement. However, I think most builds that are going to be using a Lionized Vision are already going to be right side of the tree, so having getting 160 dexterity, not going to be that difficult. It also gives you a huge chunk of armor, which is really nice Vol Molten Shell Synergy. I really think this is nice with a Spectral Shield Throw. You could potentially get a lot of armor, get some big Vol Molten Shells, and then of course having that additional pierce is pretty cool. The Mana Leech is pretty interesting. I would say in some cases it's entirely useless but in some other cases, like maybe you want to skip out on using a uh, Lion Eyes Fall unique jewel, you know, you could just get this Mana Leech here and then suddenly you're getting Mana Leech on your build when ordinarily you'd have to go out of your way for it. Overall, it's only one chaos and I think that's a huge steal for the stats that it provides. The big downsides of this, well, there aren't really a lot of massive downsides, but I think the big downsides is you're losing out on that percent life that you can get on a bunch of other rare chests, which is really big for right side of the build trees and it also has a pretty significant strength requirement. So unless you're playing something like a duelist, like a gladiator or slayer bow character, you might struggle a little bit to hit that fat 160 strength requirement. Uh, overall, I just think it's a steal for its price, and I think more people should be considering it. 
Hail Negator is a unique helmet that provides you with some benefits that you're not really going to get from any other helmet in the game. Specifically, if you're a build that doesn't have a lot of life recovery, I'm talking, you know, not a lot of leech, not a lot of regen, maybe for some reason you can't even run a life flask, Hail Negator has got you covered. If you get hit with a savage hit, which is around 35 or 33 percent, it's just like a third of your life, you're going to instantly burn all of those spirit charges that you can see there in the description, and you're going to heal right up to full. So this is going to prevent you from getting one shot, not true one shot. If you literally go 100 to zero, it's not going to do anything from to you. But if you get hit for like, uh, you know, half your life, you're instantly going to heal up to full, which is a very strong reactionary burst heal. You do have to run a couple of abyss jewels, but that's kind of the point of Hail Negator. You're all going to already going to be running abyss jewels, and that's where Hail Negator comes into play. The downside of this item is really just the standard downsides of using a unique helmet. One, you're losing out on that helm enchant, uh, which can kind of suck. And then also you're losing out on the nearby enemies mod, which can also suck. But the damage you can get from having two additional abyss jewels in your build can make up for that easily in some scenarios uh, it also has a very high intelligence requirement so if you're going to be like a dumb marauder side of the tree or you know straight up ranger full right side of the tree you might struggle to get in that intelligence you need but other than that i think hail negator can provide some very situational and um, niche benefits to a lot of builds especially probably minion or totem builds would be the number one benefiters from a item like this on the other side of the spectrum, we have Blood Grip, which is not situational at all, really. It's very good for all kinds of attack builds, but most importantly, it's a 1C unique that is basically equivalent to any 5C rare. It gives you a good amount of life, a good amount of added physical damage, and a good amount of regen. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Most builds can benefit from those stats very comfortably. It also gives you this interesting stat of life recovery rate from flasks, which a lot of people will sleep on, but there's many builds that don't have access to, you know, Slayer Leech or huge regen so you slap this amulet on suddenly every time you life flask instead of just healing up for half your life or three quarters of your life you're just healing to full right away especially if you're using those bubbling divine flasks i think this is a lot of fantastic synergy uh, if you can also get a corrupting blood immunity on a jewel which is a lot of builds use unique jewels where you can just you know pretty much spam vol orbs until you get what you need then you're functionally a ble uh, immune to bleed like you don't have to run a anti-bleed flask so you're not going to take additional damage from moving while bleeding, which is the big damage that comes from bleed, and then you can't get corrupting blood. I know this is kind of cheating by saying you need to have another special corrupted jewel to make this work, but it's it's just an interesting choice. It's also a unique amulet and has the inbuilt strength of making it so once you get this amulet and you want to have it as your end game choice for your build, you can just anoint it and you get that anoint and you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm going to be upgrading my amulet and I have to spend an extra couple of exalts because I need to get that soul of steel anoint one more time. You can anoint this and not feel bad about it. Uh, uh, the big downsides of this, it is a little bit lower on the stat side. A rare amulet can beat this in pretty much every respect, but you know, you'd have to pay a little bit more for that. And then it also has no resistances and no crit multi. So most attack builds would probably want to want a little bit more oomph in the absolute end game. Gifts from Above is a really cool ring that provides a lot of unique and powerful benefits that you're not going to get on rare rings or really any other unique ring in the game. First of all, it gives you huge amounts of crit, and if we're counting the Consecrated Ground, which is kind of cheating but in some cases very relevant, you're getting over 150% increased generic critical strike chance just from this ring alone. You're also getting up to 50% increased damage and 5% chance to block when you're on that Consecrated Ground, which we're already looking, these are just a lot of massive numbers. It's all generic uh, multipliers in the day we're not getting some crazy stuff like crit multi or uh, more damage but getting a lot of generic increased damage doesn't hurt either five percent block also a very solid stat if you're not super familiar with block that's literally a five percent chance to not take damage when you're hit by an attack so you can count that as a ehp increase in some cases it also gives you this weird 50 percent rarity when you're killing enemies with crits which doesn't hurt let's be honest rarity may not be as good as quantity but who wouldn't want an extra 50 percent rarity on their build that's not a bad stat uh, it's also absurdly cheap that's going to be the case for a lot of these items obviously but in this case i think the power that you get from gifts from above especially because you can't really get uh this amount of crit anywhere else in the ring slot uh it's very very cheap it's downsides really obvious here you can see it has no life so it's you're lacking a little bit of survivability on this slot and then also the way the consecrated ground procs it lasts for seven and a half seconds but it has a five second cooldown so you're not going to have good uptime while clearing maps you're really only going to have the perfect consecrated ground uptime if you're bossing also there's a lot of insane rings in the game like you know the uh, synthesis rings the uh, mark of the shaper slash elder rings you're really giving up kind of some pretty insane rings just to use gifts from above 
it's really cheap. I still think it's viable for a lot of builds, but you are giving up some very insane end game options. So Snake Pit, in my opinion, is a borderline build defining ring that can rework subpar skills and to be actually good or at least usable. It gives you a nice chunk of spell damage and cast speed, which at max rolls can be very significant, especially for self cast builds that really benefit from that 10% increased cast speed. And then just all of the various spells in the game that don't feel that good on their own. Suddenly you give them a little bit of fork, you give them some chain, and you're not having to spend a link. You don't have to literally run fork or chain support, and you're giving them a lot more oomph that they normally wouldn't have. For example, I played this with Fireball a couple leagues ago. You could clear so godlike with this, get some crazy fork in there without having to spend a link on it. Magma Orb with the additional chain can be really good. Spark, Ethereal Knives, just to name a few. And at the end of the day, this ring uh, with the lowest rolls possible, which is kind of just all you need at the end of the day. You don't actually need the huge amount of spell damage and huge amount of cast speed unless you want the best of the best it's only going to cost you around two or three chaos so you can create a build defining um choice here that's going to allow you to use skills that normally wouldn't be viable or even strong and you can just totally reinvent them with an item like this the downsides of this ring obviously no life and then same thing as the previous ring gifts from above is you're giving up a lot of other really good unique rings out there just to run this item I know some of you guys are probably cringing already, but hear me out. The Whispering Ice is not a terrible item. It is 100% build defining, and you can really make a solid build around this item. For one, it's ridiculously cheap. There's a common divination card that drops it. So seriously, you're going to find these like you know, hanging from trees, seriously. Does not need to be six linked either. So you can get this item, you can just six socket and you are good to go. You can start clearing end game maps if your build is up to snuff. It also gives you access to intelligence stacking, which, you know, blessing or curse, however you want to look at. But as far as I'm concerned, any kind of stat stacking in this game with the uh, tools we have available to us on the tree is very strong. So just an item that lets you do that gives you an excuse to get into intelligence stacking, means you can make a very tanky energy shield build um, without even having to worry about investing in crazy energy shield gear it's also very flexible you can do a lot with this ice storm skill you can play cast on crit you can play cast while channeling you can make mines you can make totems it's a seven link around this intelligence stacking cold firestorm ability basically um, also this kind of plays into it too and being cheap but the abundance of them means you can actually hunt for corruptions pretty easily you just buy a bunch of these you start corrupting yeah you're going to brick a lot of them but at the end of the day you're not costing yourself a lot um, like for example you could go for power charge on critical stress which could add an extra easy, what, 120, 120% critical strikes, strike chance to your build. Um, corruption hunting with rare uniques is a really cool thing in general, but the Whispering Ice, it's so easy to do that with this. Um, the downside of this is that it does kind of lock you into some specific build choices because I think you have to play this with intelligence stacking to really even start to get the most out of it. Otherwise, you're just going to have no base damage and it's not going to be worth it. Um, but that's, that's not a big deal in my opinion. I think this is a really interesting, strong item that a lot of people like to overlook because it's so damn common, but you can really uh, get some crazy damage and unique build options out of the Whispering Ice. So the Dancing Duo is another 100% build defining item uh, that gives you access to these really fun, unique, hyper aggressive Cycloning Sword Immortal minions. Uh, it doesn't need to be linked. All you need to do is six socket this item and then you're good to go. You just you put your supports in it and uh, they rampage, they go everywhere. It's really cool. Um, another thing that's pretty interesting is you don't need to really run any specific ascendancy with this. The item is very self-contained, kind of like a, a soul rest item. And uh, it can really just do its own thing. As long as you have some kind of minion damage scaling or maybe some kind of auras working in, you can fit this into Necro, Occultist, Guardian, Scion, Pathfinder. Uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do with the Dancing Duo. And at the end of the day, it's a really fun build style. It does have a couple of downsides that I should mention, probably more so than other items on this list. One, there are so many fantastic high damage minion builds out there. I would say the Dancing Duo falls a little short in terms of just total like DPS throughput. It also forces you to do some awkward flask management. Not everybody loves spamming the writhing jar in between packs. And of course, you're giving up your weapon slot. No, you cannot weapon swap after these items activate and start, you know, cutting everything down. So you're giving up a lot to run this and not everybody likes using the writhing jar. So you win some, you lose some. But I still think everybody who likes minions should probably try out a dancing duo build at some point.
The Gray Spire is probably my favorite item on this list, and it is a borderline build-defining staff that can work with a ton of different skills, both attacks and spells. For one, insane global damage, that really just applies to so many different things. Uh, local attack speed, so you can play it actually as an attack uh, staff, which is weird to say because it has terrible DPS, but then it also has max res, and you're not going to find 4% max res on any other weapon. I don't even know if there's any other item in the game that gives you 4% max resistances. I'm pretty sure that's a unique stat as well. So global damage is something that a lot of people kind of don't understand, but it will allow you to scale a lot of unique damage sources that you normally would not be scaling. For example, heralds, corpse explosions, damage over time effects. And I'm not just talking like essence strain. I'm talking like decay support. Um, global damage is very powerful. You just have to be careful about how much other sources of increased damage you stack or else you'll get some diminishing returns. Attack speed and base crit. If you look here, it's got 6.3% base crit very high for really just any weapon in general and then attack speed fastest APS of any staff in the game it's five chaos for worst rolls possible which uh, you can get some pretty expensive ones if you want to really go for the best of the best but as far as I'm concerned you only need the attack speed if you're playing an attack build and then you only need to worry about the global damage if well, I guess the more global damage, the better. But seriously, you're just getting a nice chunk of it regardless of what you buy. It does have some downsides, though. One, it has no sockets in it, so you can't use a Calms, which kind of sucks because that's a big benefit of two Hounders, that you can run them with a, a Calms heart can't do that here. The variable rolls will make it pricey depending on whether you want a good one or an average one. And then global damage is kind of weird to scale. Not a lot of people understand how it works. Point is, the more increased damage you already have in your build, so like on your tree, for example, uh, the less value you're getting out of this global damage on your staff. So you have to be careful about what other aspects of your DPS you're scaling. And uh, for anybody curious, no, global damage does not work with your minions. Um, so no, you're not. this is not some insane minion staff that also gives you 4% to max resistances. Now, I know some of you guys are laughing, but hear me out. I want to talk about Vulcanus, which is an item that's always been kind of crappy since its introduction, but they buffed it a little bit in synthesis, and I do actually think it's uh, fairly competitive for some uh, niche builds now. It looks like a really awkward, daunting weapon when you just read the text on it, but I think at the end of the day, the best way to build around this weapon is just take Avatar of Fire, and then it instantly turns into a easy 500 LEDPS dagger that only costs you one chaos. You are not going to get a 500 LEDPS one-hander for one chaos anywhere else in the game. It's, it's just not happening. I might be forgetting some kind of unique uh, that item that I didn't consider for this video, but as far as rares are considered, this is an extremely high value weapon. If you dual wield, you are also getting up to 400% increased global critical strike chance. You can't sleep on it. I know you can find crit all over the tree, but 400%, that's just too big of a number not to get excited about. It also has the added benefit of if you take Avatar of Fire, which you should be taking to make this a reasonable weapon that's worth considering, you're also getting full fire conversion. So if you're using a skill that's just a base physical skill like Cyclone, you take Avatar of Fire and then the weapon itself does all the conversion for you and suddenly you have this, uh, all that uh, free added physical damage that you're getting on the Cyclone gem, that's now all fire damage, which is very convenient and actually pretty easy to build around. The weapon itself is just an insane stat stick for how much it costs, and I think more people should be considering it, especially if they're on any kind of budget. The downsides, because this weapon is not without downsides, trust me, is that dagger wheels are kind of awkward, a little bit average. They're not as good as, you know, sword or claw wheels, for example, and they're just a little bit uh, out of the way. You have to go up towards the intelligence side of the tree. So really, I think this weapon's only really viable for uh, rangers or shadows or some weird meme duelist build. Um, and then it also requires avatar fire which limits your options in a, in a couple of ways but it also makes things easier so you win some you lose some uh, more importantly it's just the fact that avatar of fire is so out of the way that i'm pretty sure you should just be taking zoff's blood like you kind of just have to use that amulet if you're going to make these daggers work it also has terrible attack speed but at the end of the day even with all these downsides i still think the dagger is worth considering for anybody that's operating on a budget Next up, we have the enabler of meme builds himself, the Sire of Shards, which is actually not that bad of an item. A lot of people overlook this item until, you know, some post gets shown on Reddit of somebody instantly clearing Legion encounters with Magma Orb, but I think we would all be better served if we didn't need to see some clip on Reddit to remind us that an item is good, uh, you know, every couple months or so. So... 
For items like magma orb, ball lightning, or freezing pulse that turns them into this weird, from being a weird frontal cone ability that requires GMP to even work at all, into something that you can kind of just use on its own and have this like 360 AOE, uh, almost winter orb-esque, like pre-nerf winter orb-esque clear. It's pretty interesting. It will also let you avoid GMP in some cases because it does give you that additional four projectiles, which may or may not be enough in some cases, but for something like magma orb or ball lightning, which have a built-in AOE component, it's probably enough to let you avoid running greater multiple projectiles so that you could see that as an extra link of damage for clearing. It also gives you a nice chunk of attributes and a couple of resistances, not a huge amount, but a little bit, which will help you in your overall gearing flexibility. Most importantly, this is a 1C item. Gotta love it. You can't really get, get better for the unique benefits that it provides at 1 Chaos. It does have the downsides of variable rolls being variable costs. That projectile damage roll can add a little bit to your overall cost, but it's still going to be pretty cheap. And it also has very weak single target potential. This item does not provide a lot of damage, especially when you compare it to other staff options, because now staffs can do things like roll up to plus five gem levels, give you absolute shit tons of crit multi. There's just a lot of benefits that staffs offer that Sire of the Shards doesn't really do. It still is kind of memey at the end of the day. I don't think you're going to be using this to do anything outside of speed clear maps, but you know, that's why you maybe consider working in a weapon swap. That's something I've done before and it's pretty comfortable. You're just clearing around with Sire of Shards and then you need to one shot a boss. So maybe you weapon swap over to your plus five lightning gems, uh, ball lightning setup or whatever. Anyway, Sire of Shards, yeah, it's a fucking meme, but it's a pretty good meme at that. Now, I know I said Gray Spire was my favorite item on this list, and it usually is, but in some scenarios, I would have to say I do think Debian Sturge is just as cool, if not cooler. One, it is the highest DPS of any unique axe in the game. Weird, weird title for it to hold for how cheap it is, but that's just the case. Also provides 15% movement speed and 150% increased Ellie damage if you've Warcried recently. Yes, Warcries is not something you're going to naturally be doing on pretty much any build, but these are really huge benefits. Like 150% damage, yeah, you're going to have a lot of increased damage already, but... Nobody's going to say no to 150% increased damage. That's still nice. And 15% movement speed is not a joke, especially when you consider the nodes that you're going to be taking uh, with using War Cries are already providing you a significant amount of movement speed. So you're going to be running hella fast with this item. It's going to be pretty fun. Um, and overall, War Cries aren't super popular because I think they're a little bit out of the way and not everybody likes to press that extra button, you know, spamming around while you're playing. But they're actually in a pretty good spot. You can get a lot of uh, damage. You can get uh, endurance charges. You can get uh, explosions with Abyssal Cry. War Cries actually can feel pretty good if you take the Instant War Cry node and the uh, Mana Free node. And if you go the Zerker node on top of that, you can get a huge chance to deal double damage as well. So overall, I think War Cries are a little bit undervalued, which in turn also makes Debbie on Sturge a little bit undervalued. Another really cool aspect of this item, and this is one that I think you should really uh, pay attention to if you're interested in min-maxing build with Debbie on Sturge, is they are absolutely stupidly cheap like 15 chaos for a six link because of metamorphs. So if you want to be a corruption hunter, there's some hella good corruptions you can get with Debbie on Sturge. You can get uh, socketed gems are supported by fortify onslaught inspiration. Um, Seriously, these are, these are huge deals. You can get local attack speed. So if you want to like min-max a Debian Sturge build, you could easily do some uh, corruption hunting with double corruption room and get a huge LEDPS axe that's going to cost you so little at the end of the day compared to any sort of uh, comparable rare option. Downsides, of course, are going to be that it has no base crit, no base attack speed. I mean, it has the stats. It doesn't have like local modifiers to make them any higher, which really does hurt your end game DPS scaling. It is kind of freeing in a way that you don't have to worry about those stats, but it does kind of suck too. And then also knockback at the end of the day, I think is a very frustrating stat. Nobody really likes knocking back enemies. Uh, it just makes them harder to kill, I think, in most cases. So Debian Sturge, um, undervalued as shit. Seriously, you should be considering this, especially if you are playing a uh, Warcry Berserker build. This should be at the top of your list for uh, cheap uniques to consider. One of my personal favorite rings in the game is Dream Fragments, and this was actually the inspiration for the video. I'm going to come out and say it because I used it on my Chieftain build, and so many people were critical of it, and I was thinking, why don't more people value this ring? It's pretty cool. There's a lot of great uniques in the game. I should just make a video about them. Um, but anyway, huge mana and huge mana regen can be really beneficial. For some builds, this can be the difference between needing mana leech or needing an enduring flask and not needing that. So it's just going to solve all your mana problems in some cases. Also, if you're playing a mind over matter build, 
threshold, this can be a huge effective HP increase. In some cases, it'll push you from below the desired mind over matter threshold to above it because it's it's just a huge amount of mana. It also gives you a nice amount of resistances, which is cool because when you're running unique rings, a lot of the time you're giving up on those resistances that you need to cap out before you really start mapping efficiently and not worrying about your uh, you know deaths all the time. Huge amount of cold resistance, so you're not giving up anything there. Also gives you anti-chill and anti-freeze. Now, this is not like the brine crown. You literally cannot be chilled or frozen in any way, so you don't need to run a flask. It's not even a question. You run this, you suddenly don't have to worry about running that anti-freeze flask, and that can be the difference between running an extra you know, quicksilver of adrenaline so you're going fast, or an additional DPS flask so you can blow up map bosses that much more easily. Overall, it's only one chaos. It's a great value and can add a lot to a significant amount of builds. I would say the downside is it a little bit niche. I don't think all builds can benefit from this or even half the builds in the game, but there there are some. So I'm, this, I'm talking about this for a reason, but it is a little bit niche. You can't just slap this on any build. And it also has no life on it. And of course, you're giving up a lot of insane other rings. I just think at the cost, more people should be considering Dream Fragments for um, what it does for so many caster and mind over matter builds out there. Last but not least, we have Hiri's Truth. Hiri's Truth can, in my opinion, situationally be the absolute best-in-slot DPS choice for some left-side-of-the-tree cold conversion attack builds. It gives you a level 22 precision and up to 65 dexterity, which in a lot of cases can take you from subpar accuracy right up to that 3,000 cap. It also gives you a reduced mana reservation line, which may not seem like a big deal, but if you're playing an attack build, chances are you don't have a massive mana pool, so that mana reservation can be the difference between being able to run your 50% aura like hatred or not being able to run it. It also gives you a shit ton of flat cold and flat physical damage, which again, if you're playing a cold conversion build, these are exactly the stats you're looking for. It even gives you good amounts of crit multi, not up to 35% like you'd get on a rare multi, a rare amulet, but still up to 28%, that's, that is not a dead stat. I think pretty much any build that would be considering this amulet already will see that crit multi and more or less start salivating. I think specifically if you're playing a cold conversion berserker that's on the left side of the tree, I think this is a excellent amulet that is a perfect fit for a lot of what berserker needs. Another cool aspect of it, it is a unique amulet, so just like blood grip when you go and anoint in it you don't have to worry about the cost of potentially upgrading and like oh shit now the cost of my next amulet is going to be an extra few x because i need to anoint constitution or something no your anoint is permanent feels good man it does have a couple of downsides really the main downsides are the fact that it gives you physical damage leech that's not even a downside so much as a like why why would you do that because you're playing this with cold conversion so physical damage leech is a uh, literally useless no life at all people do like to get some life on their amulets but hopefully if you're left side of the tree you're not uh, desperately needing life in a way anyway and then it is a little bit niche i was very specific when i said cold conversion left side of the tree because if you're right side of the tree you probably don't need this so badly if you're a juggernaut you probably don't need this so badly um it is a little bit situational but when it works it really does work and you should be considering Harry's truth Okay, guys, that's going to be about it for me today. Sorry, I know this is a bit of a longer video than usual, but I had a lot of really cool uniques. And believe it or not, I had a list of like 100 and I had to cut them down to what we talked about today. So if you're interested in a sequel to this, or maybe you want me to do a uh, overvalued or overrated uniques video, let me know in the comments below. Um, I'm always listening. I always read them, even if I don't respond to all of them. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. This has been Nathan, and I'll catch you next time. This is the part of the video where I thank my awesome Patreon supporters, Real Human, Zikarak, Squally, Zuljan, Coda, Julia, Allen, Keplerk, Sparky, Cata, Fusk, Putzak, Heiser801, Kyle, Logan, Ice Dude, Ginzig, Anonymous, Orangina, and Marius. Thank you guys so much. You're great. You're fantastic. You're, you're keeping me eating and living and all that good stuff. If anyone else is interested in joining these fine folks over at my Patreon, you can check me out at patreon.com slash NathanBrotherBob. Or if you have a spare Twitch Prime, Amazon Prime thing laying around, you can check me out at twitch.tv slash NathanBrotherBob and uh, throw me a Prime sub there. You know, that's that's an easy way to sort of support me. You know, hopefully it doesn't cost you too much outside of that fat yearly cost of Amazon Prime. But, you know, people are paying that anyway. Maybe, you're, maybe your mom or your your wife or your best friend or your 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 dog's uh, cat's child's cousin is paying a prime and you, you just have a free prime sub and you don't know what to use it on. Well, check me out. Nathan brother, Bob on Twitch. You can also check out my discord bottom right hand corner. That's a thing. I'm not going to try to say it cause I'll fuck it up. Uh, either way, thank you guys so much for watching and or supporting me. Uh, you guys are all lovely. Bye. <laughs>